Austin and today is a very special day because today I hold in my hands Taylor Swift's fifth studio album, 1989. Yep, I trekked on over to Target, picked up this bad boy, the deluxe edition obviously, because you need to get those bonus tracks and those extra special songwriting voice memos that Taylor has never included in an album before, kind of giving us a sneak peek into her songwriting process. I think the songwriting voice memos are pretty awesome. There's three different ones and they give you three different examples of how Taylor writes songs. So this is the album cover and the back. It's got a great Polaroid theme going on. And speaking of Polaroids, Taylor included a special pack of 13 Polaroids in each album. There are five different packs, and this one right here is the second pack, which is 14 through 26. And it just features a bunch of exclusive Polaroid photos of Taylor with some awesome song lyrics at the bottom. dying for a Taylor Swift album. She comes out with a new one every two years and I just could not wait when I heard that 1989 was going to be coming out. So let's talk about some of the songs on this album. The first, of course, is Welcome to New York. You can definitely hear that 80s sound, but I think it sounds less like a Taylor Swift song and more like one of those viral video kind of songs like Rebecca Black's Friday. The second song on the album is called Blank Space and this is definitely a song that I have heard so many people say is their new favorite. This song to me has a very Natasha Bedingfield kind of sound, especially in the beginning. And I just like that kind of like pop that it has. It's like da 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 and I think that that's like a fun beat to like dance to with your friends or like to kind of like just jam out to. The third song on the album is called Style, and there's just something about this song that I love. It's so funky. Like, when I listen to it, it makes me feel like I'm in a music video. It's one of those kind of songs. It just has this, like, funky beat, but it's a little bit darker in the beginning, which is kind of cool because it makes it seem mysterious, and I think that's the vibe Taylor was going for. And then it gets to this, like, awesome pop sound that's just, like, the most catchiest lyrics ever, and this song is definitely one of my favorites on the album. Out of the Woods is the fourth song, and it reminds me of Fifi Dobson for some reason. If you guys know who she is, she's a Canadian singer-songwriter, and she just has this awesome alternative pop rock sound, and this song just reminds me of that. Like, I could totally hear her singing this song, and actually that would be like a pretty awesome collaboration, Taylor Swift and Fifi Dobson. I just need Phoebe Dobson to come back, make a comeback, girl, because she's one of my favorite artists of all time, and so is Taylor Swift, and I just really love this sound. It's, again, very dark, and you can definitely hear that kind of, like, 80s, and, you know, you can just picture yourself, like, in a forest, surrounded by trees, and it's like, are we out of the woods yet? Are we out? No! All You Had To Do Was Stay is the fifth song on Taylor's album, and this song sounds like a classic Taylor Swift song with, like, sprinkles of this like pop sound on top you know like a lot of you know different instrumentals there's a lot of like kind of drum beat in there and then that high note that stay stay but you know still that same message of like you know all you gotta do is stay and you kind of like ruin this you stupid boy you know, one of, one of those kind of songs. Number six is Shake It Off, which I think was a great song to come out with as the single for this album. It's very fun, there's a lot of different instruments, it kind of shows Taylor just being silly, and it's kind of like the mean from Speak Now for this album. You know, that one was all about, you know, people that were mean, and this one is about kind of shaking those people off, you know? Shake, 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 shake it off, shake it off, yeah! I think the song is great because it's fun, you can dance to it, but it also speaks to people with like a message of, you know, who cares about the haters or, you know, the players or the cheaters or whatever, just kind of shake it off and do you. Number seven is I Wish You Would, which is actually a song that Jack Antonoff sent to Taylor. He sent her the music and she put words on it and they decided to collaborate on it. And this song is fun because it's very quick, but it still has those classic Taylor moments. And I think that's so cool that even if Taylor is changing her sound, she still has that same kind of core, you know, that 2 a.m. in your car, green eyes, you know, all of these references that she makes in a lot of her songs. You know, she keeps that with her even if she's changing up her sound. 
The eighth song on this album is called Bad Blood, and it is rumored to be about Katy Perry. This song is very beat heavy. It kind of has a little bit of like a hip hop flair to it, if you will. A lot of people have said this song sounds like a Katy Perry song. Uh, maybe that's from rhyming Bad Blood and Mad Love. Like I could see Katy Perry singing about Mad Love. Da -da 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 -da. But I, I actually think that this song kind of reminds me of Lord. I don't know if maybe Taylor was inspired by her, they are friends. But that dark drum beat just sounds like something I would hear in a Lord song. Wildest Dreams, which is the ninth song on the album, is my favorite out of all of the songs. It kind of has this like wispy, whispery, flowy kind of sound. People have said it's very Lana Del Rey-ish, and I just think it sounds really awesome, and I love the end when it gets to the bridge, where it's kind of fast. I just think it sounds so awesome, and this is the song that I have had on repeat. Uh, and I, I love, again, you know, it has some more Taylorisms, you know, talking about wearing a dress and like, uh, you know, I hope you'll remember me. It's kind of similar, in a way, to Tim McGraw. So I just heart this song so much. The tenth song on this album is called How You Get The Girl, and for me this feels like another, you know, classic Taylor Swift song. I feel like this song could have potentially been on the album Fearless, possibly. Um, but, you know, there's that pop sound that comes in that kind of differentiates it and makes it, you know, part of 1989. There's also something about the chorus of this song that just really sounds to me like Your Love Is My Drug by Kesha, so I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> This Love is the 11th song on the album, and this is a song that Taylor wrote by herself for this album. She didn't work with anyone else on it. The other songs she collaborated with other people on. It's definitely the big ballad for this album, um, but I kind of wish that it had had a little bit more to it. You know, I would have loved to heard the song kind of like reach like a very high peak point and then, you know, kind of end. It kind of is all just one note. Number 12 is I Know Places, and the song starts out really dark, and you know, I've noticed throughout the entire album, there's a lot of songs that start off in a dark place, and they kind of get lighter and um, a little bit higher for Taylor than um, I think we've heard in the past, and I really love that sound. It's kind of like ethereal in a way, but I think I Know Places is a really fun song. I love how you know, how like dark and kind of like a little bit eerie it is in the very beginning, and then it's kind of like you know, the lyrics are a little bit darker, saying like, you know, they're trying to hunt us down and, and things like that. Um, and I believe this song is supposed to be about, you know, kind of having a love in the spotlight and you don't want t that love to be out. So it's like, I know places that we could hide that people, you know, won't bother us. The 13th song on this album is called Clean, and Taylor worked on it with Imogen Heap. There's references to water, it's talking about kind of like starting anew, and what I love about this song is that you can hear the little like drip sounds, the, the way that they did the accompaniment in the background, it just sounds like water dripping, and I think that that's so cool to kind of have, you know, this metaphor, and then you can kind of hear it in the music you know, just kind of shows the detail that's in this album. And now we're getting into the bonus tracks. The first one is called Wonderland. And what I love about this song is that it really reminds me of Enchanted, that song that she came out with on Speak Now. There's just this uh, kind of like mystical, woodlandy opening, like that it feels like anything could happen. And then they fall through a rabbit hole into Wonderland. And it kind of gets more of a Sia or Rihanna sound a little bit with that A, A, A. The second bonus track is called You Are In Love, and this song was actually inspired by Lena Dunham and Jack Antonoff's relationship, which Taylor revealed after the fact because she didn't want to seem creepy that she wrote a song about their relationship. And Lena Dunham actually said that this is her someday wedding song, which is funny because she said that before she knew that the song was about her. And this song is so beautiful, it's about true love, and the lyrics are so great. And this song seems just like classic Taylor to me, where it's, you know, just telling a story, and I love that about this song. The final bonus track on this album is called New Romantics, and you can really hear that 70s and 80s new wave sound. You know, these lyrics are a little bit darker for Taylor. The sound in general has, you know, a little bit of a darker, kind of, you know, obviously more pop sound because this is Taylor's official pop album. But in this one, I feel like the lyrics itself are a little bit darker. You know, talking about how heartbreak is our new anthem and things like that. It also, it kind of sounds a little like kind of popish, you know, just very like kind of strong and like 
heavy beat and I think that this song is definitely different for Taylor and definitely really fun. All right, well that has been my review of Taylor Swift's 1989 deluxe edition album. I hope you enjoyed it. My personal favorite song is Wildest Dreams. I also really love Style, Blank Space, and Out of the Woods. I hope you guys have checked out this album and if you haven't, go buy it because it's so good. If you have already heard it, make sure to leave a comment below and let me know what your favorite song is. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up if you love Taylor Swift and loved the 1980 album. I will leave my social media links in the description box below as well as a link to where you can pick up this album if you haven't already. If you haven't already, what are you doing with your life? You need it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you'll click that subscribe button if you like my videos because I come out with new ones every week. Alright, see ya!